Hi everyone, it's January 31st, huh? 2021, and I'm here recording uh, live, not live, but pre-recording for uh, Sunday school um, early, because uh, I don't know how the uh, bandwidth is going to be here at the hotel. So I just wanted to get this done at the early session and get it recorded so that uh, you guys can experience uh, the lesson in Amos today in the chapter. Thank you, Lord, for this time that we can just come before you, that we can uh, understand uh, in verses here in Amos chapter 8. I just ask that you just uh, deliver the message unto us, um, keep us faithful in your word, um, that we can continue this lesson, Lord, and that you just let it work in our hearts so that we can bring your gospel. Now, I'm just going to explain briefly is that this is the beginning of the pre recorded sessions that we're going to be doing for Sunday school. Uh, we're also uh, going to have a live Sunday schools, and on Sundays, that's going to be at 9.30 at Trinity. Um, I ask that you just uh, please make an effort to attend those, or those will also be live-casted on Zoom also. And that's beginning next week, February 6th. So uh, <clears throat> please be open to uh, to investigate these lessons and to... Uh, Make sure that you are able to, uh, you know, attend either one or view both of them. You know, whichever one is, is, uh, is appreciated. Just so want you to know you're hearing some noise maybe in the background. Um, I'm in I'm in the hotel room here, and I'm actually in Florida, but it's okay. We're wearing masks and everything, but it's a uh, it's beautiful it's beautiful down here, and now we're enjoying ourselves. So if anyone cares about that, so. Firstly, we're going to, and I'm going to read, read uh, uh, Amos chapter 8 to you. It's 14 verses, so it's, uh, it's not too complicated uh, of, a, of a lesson. It is kind of repetitive. Um, Thus hath the Lord God showed unto me, and behold, a basket of summer fruit. And he said, Amos, what seest thou? And I said, a basket of summer fruit. And then said the Lord unto me, the end is come upon my people of Israel. I will not again pass by them anymore. And the songs of the temple shall be howlings in that day, saith the Lord God. There shall be many dead bodies in every place. They shall cast them forth with silence. Hear this, O ye, that swallow up the needy, even to make the poor of the land to fail, saying, When will the new moon be gone that we may sell corn? And the Sabbath that we may set forth wheat, making the ephah small and the shekel great, and falsifying the balances of this by the sea. And we may buy the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of shoes, yea, and sell the refuse of the wheat. The Lord hath sworn by the excellency of Jacob, surely I will never forget any of their works. Shall not the land tremble for this and every one born that dwelleth therein? And it shall rise up fully as a flood, and it shall be cast out and drowned as by the flood of Egypt. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord God, that I will cause the sun to go down at noon, and I will darken the earth in the clear day. And I will turn your feast into mourning and all your songs into lamentation. I will bring up sackcloth upon all loins and baldness upon every head, and I will make it as the morning of an only son. And, and the end thereof as a bitter day. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. And they shall wander from sea to sea and from north even to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord and shall not find it. And that day shall the fair virgins and young men faint for thirst. That they that swear by the sin of Samaria and say, Thy God, O Dan, liveth, and the manner of Beersheba liveth, even they shall fall and never rise up again. So we see here it's it's still uh, sort of this word going against the people of Israel, and they are suffering um, already before even the captivity comes. Uh, they still will not relent in their sinning against God. And uh, so we're just going to, we're probably going to keep this short, probably like, mm, maybe like, the, like, get up through maybe like three verses here. 
to get into an understanding because all these lessons are going to be much brief, much more brief than the previous ones, um, just for, for convenience sake and uh, because uh, we will be having the other lessons also. Um, and because it's a, it's a pre-recorded fashion, there's really not a lot of uh, interaction. So we see here, and In the first, in the first verse, uh, thus hath the Lord God showed unto me, and behold, a basket of summer fruit. So we, to understand this, this fourth vision, okay, given unto Amos, um, he is shown uh, something by the Lord God. So he's actually seeing this first before he even hears the word from God. So he is apparently. He's in prayer, he's in med either in prayer, meditation, um, or suddenly interrupted, and he's given this strong vision. Or maybe he's actually seeing uh, uh, some summer fruit, and, and it's just a powerful, it's giving him a powerful message, focused on this, this, uh, this vision of the summer fruit. And, and uh, so it's, and it, now it's, it's, there's a tr play on words here, um, that that uh, a lot of translators uh, will let you will let you know um, that the word that, that he's using here for fruit is it's a it's a sound alike kind of word in Hebrew, um, and so he uses the sound alike word that that sounds like fruit but has a different little little edge to the word. So and it also the word that he uses actually means end, but the word sounds like fruit. So it's like kind of like it's an out of place word uh, that's like spelled just a tiny bit differently um, in the in the Hebrew letters. So instead of fruit, it it's, he uses the word end, but that word end kind of sounds like the word fruit. So here it's like Amos is a very intelligent uh, uh, man here, even though he's just a regular old farmer. He uses this word very carefully to just kind of like make this play on the word when he's speaking this out. So, uh, of course, like we have these kind of words that we can use in the English language. You know, they are sound alikes. But he actually uses this word very, uh, uh, very precisely to get this message across. Like this is summer fruit, but I'm using the word and it sounds like fruit, but you get it. You get the message. So he's using this this word here, and you know that can be missed a lot when we're just reading this. But but also for the general knowledge, when we read this, we understand that summer fruit is like it's like it comes all at once, you know. And that's how fruit is designed. It's, it's des fruit is designed to ripen all at once because because nature knows that not all that fruit can be can be eaten at once. So it inundates the system with all this fruit and, and uh, in nature, all those things can be enjoyed, but there's always gonna be some left behind enough fruit. Those fruits are of course filled with seeds and those seeds uh, fall to the ground in whatever fruit is left over, fruit rots um, when it becomes, when it's, when it's left because there's so much then also during this time, there's no refrigeration um, and uh, pres preservation uh, methods were still in its primitive form, so either salting or sugaring um, to in making it or turning it into an, an, uh, an alcohol-based, uh, you know, beverage, which is what they would do with, with a lot of fruit. Mostly, we know we, we know that we do that with grapes, um, but all these fruits would come into season all at the same time. Now, in verse two, and he said, Amos, what seest thou? And I said, a basket of summer fruit. Then said the Lord unto me, the end is come upon my people of Israel. I will not again pass by them anymore. So we see that, that this, is, this proves to us that he is given the vision of the fruit. And then the Lord asks him, what do you see? So we see that this is a, a way that prophecy can come to us. In a word from God to come to us in a vision so that we can understand that the fruit or or a vision can come to us and we can see it fully 
and understand and to before God asks us, what do you see? Sorry about the noise. Someone's going in and out of that. Um, so we see that uh, that there's a, a fruit coming and pre pre presented before him. And then God speaks to him, asks him, what do you see? So he catches Amos in this in this moment of focus, you know, and he's, he's saying, what do you see? And then he's like, oh, the Lord wants me to look at this. And Amos answers him. He goes, I see a basket of summer fruit, not just any kind of fruit. He sees a summer fruit. Um, now, summer fruit is, like I explained earlier, it, it comes and it won't keep until the winter. So it must be used all at once. If you want to use it properly, so you take the summer fruit, you 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 die on it as much as you can. You know, it's used in all your recipes for the next couple of weeks, but then whatever's left over needs to be set up in a preservation mode. It needs to be used up all. You know, you have to take advantage of this time. There's a short window where this where the summer fruit can be used, which is also being in knowledge of the uh, of the agricultural society. They knew this, and most people who dealt with the produce at this time knew that action needed to be taken. So yes, this is an action. This is a sign that there's going to be action. Uh, and the action is actually being going to be against the people because in the second half of this verse, the end has come upon my people of Israel. I will not again pass by them anymore. So we see that, that, the, that their, their sin is so ripe at this point that that their Lord cannot delay, that this is, this is the fullest, this is their, they're going to, they're going to rot in their own sin. If I don't, you know, this will be, this will destroy, this sin will destroy them completely. If, if the Lord God does not intervene and punish them for this, to show them that he is there, that, that they have, they have uh, transgressed against the Lord God. They have broken his commandments. They have fallen so far away. And, and that, 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 that this fruit is just is ready to hit the ground. So he has to make, he has to make a judgment on, on this fruit here, that the sin has come to its fullest. And he also says, I will not again pass by them anymore, which means that these, he, that, that these offenses, you know, they are, they are they, he can't pass by them anymore. He's, he's inspected the field. He's inspected them. He's been he, he checked each and every part of it, and it has to be done. This this there needs to be a harvest here, and the harvest is the punishment for the sin that they have, that they are transgressing against the Lord. Um, so he has to make an end to it. He has to he has to cleanse it, um, and uh, so that we know. So now we see that Amos is giving this message that that there is a time where God will not pass by. And this is the time. And we see this also expressed in the Old Testament uh, to Noah. So if you go to Genesis chapter 6, verse 13, and God said unto Noah, the end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. So notice God still calls his people. And his indignation is full. Now, in the New Testament, we see uh, something like this spoken in Acts by Paul, the Saul, our Saul of Tarsus. Acts chapter 13, 8 through 12. But Elimas, the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, withstood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Then Saul, who is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him and said, oh, full of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, will thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? And now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness. And he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. And the deputy, when he saw what was done, believed, being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. So we see that, that God works today the same way he works back then. 
when things have come to full fullness and we are filled with this Holy Spirit and we are filled with the Lord, we have no choice but to follow up on those things that God wants us to do. You know, he gives us the vision. He gives us the understanding of the word. And, we give, and, and he showed that to us through Amos and he shows that through us through Genesis. And he can, it's all connected. It all packs itself up to that sin cannot go unrepented. That sin pay, has, to, has a price to pay. But also we know as Christians that that price was paid by Christ. He shed his blood on the cross for us. He gave it all up for us. And so that we can be separated from that sin from now on when we give our hearts and soul all our strength unto him, the one who actually took all the sin away. So now in, in verse three, this is probably going to be the last verse we're going to go over uh, before I end this. And the songs of the temple shall be howlings in that day, saith the Lord God. There shall be many dead bodies in every place. They shall cast them forth with silence. This is a very somber ending uh, to the vision. Um, we see that, the, that it's, he's giving the Lord is giving Amos a very uh, a, a contrast contrasted statement here. He, he's showing that there's songs in the temple um, that he that should be there, but he's changing that into howlings. Literally, it's translated into the uh, into howlings. You know, and when we think of people howling, you know that that, that it's, it's it's a it's definitely the opposite of worship and mirthful music okay and and it's as if as if in the middle of your praises it's like it turns into like somebody drove something through a piece of your body and it becomes a shriek and a howl because it's a you know it's a sudden interruption um that happens here that he's saying he goes the songs in the temple shall be howling in that day so what you are doing even though he knew that they were in a temple singing, he knew that they that they were doing it in an empty uh, fashion. You know, they were just going through the motions. He knew that they were involved in idol worship and they were putting other things before him. See, God does not take second place. If you, it's either God first or God not at all. And I, and I'm, and I'm gleaning that from from Pastor, from Pastor Tony Evans. I've heard that. So I'm just. Just not, I'm not stealing it. I just want to give him credit. I've heard that from him. He goes, and it's and it's so true. And we read that in the Bible all the time. When God is not first, he just takes himself out of the picture. He says, you can have all of this. You know, this is what you want. You can't have me second, third, fourth, whatever. God says, I will be first and foremost. Okay. It's That's why it's the first commandment. You know, he, there will be no idols before him. So now, now, this, now there is a sudden, um, so we see that in the howlings, there's a sudden agony and there's a misery, you know, when we, when we, when we imagine the, the howlings. Um, and also he's speaking of the temple, you know, here. So we know that he's speaking about, about Israel. Um, and we know that, they, that Israel, in previous uh, lessons, that they were, Israel was setting up idols in the temples. Uh, we know that there was a whole, there was a temple set up in Bethel, you know, with the with all the songs in which and they uh, and they were actually it was a form of of uh, Yahweh worship there, but it was actually it was it was like actually idol worship. So they were so perverse <clears throat> in the way that they were uh, they were uh, you know using this temple. And in the previous lesson, we mentioned mentioned that the, they even set up false priests that, to. Uh, to, uh, to take care of uh, these these idol temples in Bethel and Dan, um, so which was so perverse. But then at the end of this this verse, it says, "And there shall be many dead bodies." So there were. So we, I want to remind uh, remind you that during this time, I referred you to to uh, to Second Kings um, uh, last week, and we still want to use this Second Kings as a reference to understand. What was going on at this time and we knew that there was a shalom who slew zechariah and so there were now after that there was menachem who slew shalom and when he came 
with his army against Samaria when he ripped up the women with child in Tifsa. And we all, I remember we went over that, uh, I think it was in Amos chapter two, uh, when, when uh, we went over how they ripped up the women uh, in, their, in their sinning and trying to expand their borders. Um, so I want to refer, I have a quote here from uh, 2 Kings 15, 16. Then Menahem smote Tifsa and all that were therein and the coast thereof from Terza because they opened not to him. Therefore he smote it and all the women therein that were with child he ripped up. So we see that there's this recording in Kings that really tells us what was going on in, at this time. And it was a really bloody, bloody uh, turmoil of leadership going on. <laughs> And so we see that there, that there was a lot of uh, usurpers, you know, that were pressing in. And it was very treasonous at this point in time. So to, and there had to be a price to pay for this because God did not intend for his people to, to be like this. And he says, he says, now, and when he speaks about the dead bodies, he says, he shall cast them forth with silence. Uh, so, it's so we have this vision here that there will be so many dead bodies that that they shall secretly bury some. We know that we said uh, in uh, in Amos six ten it goes and a man's uncle shall take him up and he that burneth him to bring out the bones out of the house and shall say unto him this is that is by the sides of his house is there yet any with thee and he shall say no and then shall he say hold thy tongue for we may not make mention of the name of the Lord so. This is a reference to that one that we that we went over in Amos chapter six that they will be cast forth, uh, cast them forth in silence. Um, that there will be so much death, and so much depression, and so much, you know, anxiety and worry, and and, and so much doubt um, that that it, it's gonna almost be like a, a mechanical kind of living, you know, around all this death and just kind of like bringing bringing the dead out and just uh, you know, taking care of, you know, these, the dead bodies at this point, you know, which is, you know, kind of a sad, sad sight, you know, that's given forth here by Amos. So we, we want to understand that, that Amos's message in this fourth vision is, is about the full fruit of, of, of what, the full fruit of what has happening here. Uh, with the sin of Israel, and that we want to keep in mind that that God cannot, that sin cannot be in the presence of God. Um, and in this instance, without a Messiah, God has to, in order to preserve his people, he has to wipe away this sin, and he does it uh, through the invasion, through the exile. And he still keeps a, a remnant for himself, um, to come back and rebuild the temple, but that's not for many years, probably a generation. Uh, for many, many won't see the, uh, won't remember what the old temple would have been like. Um, but also, they had been so long in sin that they were conducting themselves in such a, a hypocritical and, and astonishingly uh, vile way. Um, and that's something that a lesson for us that we should not let ourselves be taken away from the true worship of God. That we should maintain ourselves to be good, holy, sanctified vessels unto God. And that can only happen in prayer, meditation, contemplation, reading of the Word, understanding the Word, uh, learning and memorizing the Word of God, and uh, just through constant gratefulness in the Lord and to know that we are saved through Christ and he is he is one that gave us new life eternal life and he has taken that sin away so that we will not be judged by it. I just want to thank you everyone for uh, for viewing this uh, if you're viewing this on YouTube please like share and comment um, you if you know me you can also contact me um, with any questions um, like I said, this is all going to be pre-recorded from now on. There will be a live 
podcast and recording also at Trinity Seminary God. And I just thank you for attending this and in prayer. Lord, I thank you for this time that I can just, that we can expound on your word. Thank you for these verses that you have placed in my mind and that you have allowed me to teach upon. Lord, thank you for this uh, beauty and the splendor um, that you present to us each and every day. Lord, open our eyes to see your wonder. Lord, uh, I just ask that your word just goes forth and that the gospel can touch the hearts of many and that we can uh, use it for the salvation of others. In Jesus' name, amen.